Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to bypass a factory amplifier in a 1999 Toyota 4Runner SR5 Sport. So as you can see here, I've got everything ripped apart. If you notice here, first I removed the shift knob, then I put my fingers in the boot and pulled this piece up, and I believe there's two Phillips screws holding something in. And then from here, I went ahead and popped out the main bezel, and I just have it dangling there. I haven't unplugged it all the way because the wires that go to this clock, if the car is turned on, this is also some sort of like airbag um, initiator or something like that. And so if you unplug the wires to this clock and then turn on the car, you can throw like airbag codes in the system. So I just left that plugged in just to be safe. So in my 1999 Toyota 400, there was actually already an aftermarket sound system installed, but that aftermarket sound system used the OEM or the stock amplifier. So right now, this radio represents my OEM radio, even though it's obviously not OEM. Any of these wires with this like uh, foam padding on them, uh, these are OEM wires. So the first cable, we have this like aux cable looking thing. I honestly don't know what this is, but this would be plugged into your factory radio. Then the second one we have is for the radio that's plugged into the stereo. Um, that we need to unplug. That's just so your antenna can feed radio stations to your radio. And then the third thing is, assuming yours has an amplifier, and the amplifier is conveniently right here. It's this gray box with this heat sink on it. Uh, so you'll have this yellow bright wire coming out, and then this piece right here would be plugged into your factory radio. So let me show you how to bypass the amp. You can use the stock amplifier, as they've done here. This unit was installed in 2009. But for one, I don't know the wattage of the factory amplifier, so I'm going to be installing my own head unit, and that head unit puts out 22 watts RMS per channel. I've read online this, some people think this is like 2 watts, other people say about 15, some people even claim 25. So technically I might be downgrading the system, but I really don't know how many watts per channel stock amplifier is. But that doesn't matter because I'll be installing a stereo with 22 watts, which is plenty of power. And then in about a month or so, I'm going to be getting a brand new amp that's going to be about 50 watts per channel. So regardless, it'll be almost 10 times better than this one. And all this technology is from 1999. Obviously, it's going to be reliable. But since then, we've had a lot of improvements in technology and sound equipment and DSPs and DACs. And so I think it's just important that I'm going to upgrade it. And even if I don't get a huge performance gain, I think there will be a little bit more clarity in the system. So as I said for this demonstration, pretend that this is the stock radio. So first you'd want to unplug this, which is your radio stations, or your antenna. And then here's my also have this cable plugged into your stock radio. Go ahead and unplug that. And then, as you can see, I have a wiring adapter harness here. But yours would actually just come right here. Maybe there would be a different plug with two plugs. But let's go ahead and disconnect it right here. And just one thing to note, uh, this yellow cable goes to the factory amplifier. I'm not sure if all forerunners of this year have an amplifier. But as you can see, it just goes into this box here. And if you notice, uh, that box comes here. And down here, there's actually two clips that come out of the amplifier. So to bypass it, what I'm going to do is obviously not use this cable at all. I'm actually going to remove the amplifier for extra space. And I'm going to unplug the two OEM plugs from the bottom of the amplifier. And those cables are kind of hard to reach on the bottom of the amplifier. So let's go ahead and remove the amplifier. I believe it's just these two Phillips screws. One and two. So this end would go into your OEM radio, and you follow it up as far as the amplifier. Like I said, I don't know what the wattage is of the amplifier, but I do see it says something about 4 ohms and 12 volts. And here are the two factory harnesses that I'm going to be tapping into, because I don't want to use the amplifier. I got one unplugged, now let's unplug the other. And just like that, we have the wires exposed. Alright, and this here is a wiring harness. Uh, basically what it is, is a strand came with the radio, so this end will go into my aftermarket radio, and these two clips will bypass the amp and plug into the factory adapters that we just unplugged, and all I did is just uh, crimp these together so that we can get some good connections. So this is a pretty universal kit, as you can see they're different sizes, so let's go ahead and plug these two into the OEM wires. Then what I'm going to do is go ahead and zip tie this up just so it's not a rat's nest behind the dash. Then we're going to plug in our other end into our new aftermarket radio. So let's plug in our radio. That way we can listen to the radio when we're out in the boonies. Then let's go ahead and plug in our main cable. 
just like that. So right now I have the key in the ignition. If I turn it to ACC, the stereo should turn on and start playing. As well as the antenna should come up. As you can hear, music is playing. It's important that you can hear music from all six speakers. So there's obviously a tweeter. There's one here in the lower front door. And then there's also one in the rear door. Then with the vehicle on, the radio should turn back on after a quick power surge. And then audio should continue to play. And notice my antenna is still up, which is good. So I successfully got the Bluetooth to pair and holy cow. Even just with this new head unit, uh, it's only 10 years newer, the sound is amazing. It's not just the placebo effect, it, I was able to turn up the volume and it didn't even clip. Uh, the old receiver to me always seemed pretty quiet. So I personally think this highly likely has more uh, RMS wattage per channel, just because like I said, I was able to turn up the volume and I didn't get the clipping, whereas the old one, I would turn up the volume and start to get the clipping, so I don't know if that's a short supply of power per channel or what's going on, but this was definitely worth it after just like 30 seconds of playback. So the only other issue I need to resolve is what the heck is this? And then on my old aftermarket radio, uh, if I put the source to radio, the antenna would come up. But if I was listening to a CD or Bluetooth or any other input, it would come down. But for this, the antenna is always up when the car is on. And so I need to figure out if this is smart enough to control the antenna. Just say, hey, only come up if I'm using the radio. But if I'm using Bluetooth, CD, aux, etc., uh, put the antenna down. So I need to do some research on how to do that. But now let's go ahead and clean this up and finish installing. The first radio I had with the little cubby since it's a single DIN. I could have got a double DIN, but it was a lot more money. And I like to keep kind of the old schoolness of the vehicle. I wanted the Android Auto one, but it was almost $700 for a high quality unit. Um, but basically what I'm going to do is just try to transfer the hardware from here to there. Uh, Crutchfield, um, when you purchase stuff, they send you free screws, which look like these ones here. And then they also sent me another cubby, which is this piece. So we'll see if I'm able to reuse the existing stuff or if I have to craft something custom to get it to fit onto the new one. Alright, so upon further research, uh, many aftermarket radios don't have a spot for this, but what this is, is this is actually the, I believe it's the rear antenna, which controls the AM radio, which stands for amplitude modulation. And so a lot of people just say leave it unplugged, but then if you want to do it like the right, right way, uh, you can actually kind of buy like a Y jack or a splitter, uh, where these two plug into, and then the other end will plug into your radio. So I'm going to end up just buying a Y jack, but with just having this like front antenna, which is the FM, from what I understand, uh, the radio works just fine. All right, then what I've done here is just plug in my mic. For now, it's probably just going to sit right here if it'll fit. Uh, I am going to be back in here probably in the next week installing that Y jack as well as my aftermarket amplifier when I find a good deal. But let's go ahead and reinstall this. So start by seating it in position, plug in your microphone if it's applicable, plug in your antenna and plug in your main power port. All right, as you can see here, I got my antenna plugged in. I got the main harness as well as the microphone. So let's go ahead and seat this into position and fasten the four screws. Originally, I had installed it upside down. Don't ask me how I did that. And then temporarily, I just mounted the microphone here. I don't even know if anyone will be able to hear me, but we'll see. And it's also important to leave the plastic on during installation, just in case you ding it or scratch it, um, just with all the metal objects and the drill bits and things like that. So let's go ahead and fasten the four screws. There's one in each corner. Got one, two, and then two on the other side. And just for reference, these are what those look like. I believe they're eight millimeter or a Phillips. And as you see here, I got those two fastened down. And then here on the other side, I got those two fastened down. It's important to do these because I think they partially act like a ground. Like when I had the stereo just dangling and playing while testing it, there was just a bit of noise. Then once I fastened these down, the noise went away. I don't know if that's intentional or not but uh, it's important just to fasten these down as well as if you get in a front accident, your stereo could come flying out. And these are pretty big blocks and going 25 miles an hour, that's a lot of force to the skull. All right, then on the back side, there's a few connections we need to make. There's one for this little light for your ashtray. Uh, there's one, or sorry, there's two for the cigarette lighter here. Um, I also have some cigarette lighters down here since this is a 1999. Up here, we have the plug for the flashers. And up here, we have the plug that is for the clock as well as the airbag system light. And 
And over here on this side, I left my two cigarette lighters plugged in, but just push them just to make sure they're still snug. All right, now I got that lined up. It fought with me for a minute, but what the trick is, is these two have heater vents and they need to slide into the existing heater vent sockets. So that's where I was going wrong. So let's go ahead and press this firmly into place. There's gonna be about six clips, I think. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And all you do is just gently push on it with your palm. All right, and after lining up those heater vents and I still couldn't get it. So what I ended up having to do is there's this little trim piece on the radio, but for the Forerunner, I guess it's not applicable. After looking at the old one, uh, it didn't have it either. And so I actually removed that and then it was able to go into place. And so I finally got that in place. Like I said, there was six clips, you just hit it. And let's go ahead and install our bottom trim and our differential shift knob. So with the vehicle off, you're able to move this. The way you're able to do that is you have to push down really hard on this white tab and then push this button and you can move this back but let's go ahead and center this and put the trim piece on. So feed that piece through and just line it up. And then same thing, there's just four clips. All right, and the way to get this trim piece in is there was a clip here and here, so you first just slide it that way and hit it here and here. And then these clips, I was having a really hard time. The angle is just so weird, but all you do is you just kind of line it up then you just hit it straight down. You have to hit it kind of hard, but that's just the way it works. Just like that. Go ahead and install your shift knob, just thread it right, then reinstall your ashtray, just slide it in there. As you see, I got my ashtray in there, as well as the diff shifter. And so everything's good to go. I double checked that all six speakers are working. And now I'm gonna go ahead and read through the manual, uh, drive it around, tune it to how I like it. And then in a future video, I'll be doing some tweeters, some front speakers, as well as an amplifier. Gonna head over to some pawn shops today, see if I can find any good deals on some used subwoofers and amps. But thanks for watching, subscribe for more.